Let's get all the cameras on. Let's get everyone in position. College educated versus independent educated television programs that provide. Off the top. Where we at? We right here? We good right here? Yes, sir. We look like we off right here. Check me out. Put me on. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. We been on. So the vaccine is some bullshit. Hold up, before we even do it. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I already see what you're doing. We got to handle the business first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My bad. Yes, sir. We got to handle the business first. This shit good. All right, first off top, we want to get a drop for the book. Do a, do a quick drop for the book. Let them know where they can get it at. Everything. Uh, let's test it out with that, Joe. We're going to do a drop for the book. Let's do it. Let's get it. You on. Which camera am I looking at? Any one of these? Pick one. Peace family, brother, reasons I'm here. I'm here at 85 South. Make sure you go to reasonislam.com, get your book, your wristband, intellectual extremists, and it says educated, not vaccinated, whether if you did it or not. We just want to make sure we pass along the information and education. Reasonislam.com. There it is. There it is. Play some more of that. Let me let me get a few pages in while we get get right. First of all, reason welcome to the trap. Hey, come on, brother. It's always good. Family. We've been working on it for a minute, man. The street's been demanding it. You know, we go crazy over here, but we always try to use our platform, you know, not to shape nobody's opinion, but to give them the knowledge to like you have one. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. We will not never try to tell nobody what to do. Okay. But we got the platform, and we want people to be able to make their own informed, educated decisions. That's right. That's now, I'm flipping through the book, and I see that you got one of the worst I don't even know the word that's bad enough to use for this <laughs> for this guy right here. Oh, yes, sir. Who that is right up? J. Edgar Hoover. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, anybody who has any sense, any knowledge of anything, know that J. Edgar Hoover was terrible. What do you do, OG? Man, first of all, he was black. <laughs> all right, that's it. Trying to act black. like he wasn't. That's right. a fact. So uh, he did a whole lot of, you know. Oh, shit. That's the best way to put it. Found that BI pushed to infiltrate all black organizations, you name it. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, you got everything in here. You got another terrible person in here. <laughs> Bill Gates. Yes, sir. You just got... Uh, Bill Gates is a scoundrel, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give you... I don't want to give you my opinions, but, you know, they, these people out here, when you start seeing the same people over and over again... Mm -hmm. Let you I'm know right there. What you been up to, bro? Striving, brother, working, traveling, educating the people, working with uh, different people in different hoods, uh, whether they are community activists, researchers, you name it, scientists, medical professionals, even the politicians to give them information that they need to help the people. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that we can't put on social media. Right. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier today. Early, but I need censoring shit for real, for real. Yeah, the shooter, the shooter, you know, when, when he say, mm -hmm. he went up on a white man and he say, oh, sorry, yeah. they taking that shit down. Of course. But they keep up everything else. You be like, what narrative y'all well, trying to paint? His parents are trying to say that it was because of the pandemic. And Ain't no damn house. pandemic. You sat in the house and really had to figure out what the fuck was going on. <laughs> you had a conscious mind. You seen that white boy and you said, oh, sorry. And exactly. you kept going, you kept going with your plan. Exactly. You ain't no mental illness, nigga. Exactly. You know what the fuck going on? Because if that's the case, we should all be shooting up the whole damn country. Mm -hmm. If that's if, the case, if, if that's, that's, what you want, if if that's, that's how they want to swing it. Right. Mm. What happened in chapter two, mental health versus mental illness, mm -hmm. fact versus fiction. Cover that as well. Come on, man. I know real mental health. They are in the mental institution. Mm. They are already there. <laughs> <laughs> the people that mental health are already there. Like, you see everybody who's walking around, you will assume they in their right state of mind. Mm -hmm. Come on, All they take is for you to be like, you know what, let me go do some dumb shit. Mm -hmm. That nigga ain't no mental illness. <laughs> He well, had see, that's the, sense until he did what he wanted to do. They don't that's right. never use the mental illness excuse when black people do so. Nice. At all. Because, you know, black people just supposed to know better. Right. <laughs> Even when we talk to our kids, you can have a house full of two-year-olds. You can still go yell out, hey, get somewhere and act like you got some damn sense. <laughs> they like, I'm trying to figure out what the sense is. <laughs> no, that belt cleared up our mental illness. That's what it was. Me. Niggas ain't scared to get their ass whooped no more because they ain't getting their ass whooped. Mm -hmm. White kid be yelling at their parents, shut up, mom. That ain't that. That boy been, <laughs> he been mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> yelling back at your mama, you been had mental illness. What? <laughs> Ain't no so he, you got this on here too. This is one of the things that that, that guy was talking about, like mm -hmm. that vanishing white America theory. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts 
I'll just tell you this way. We have opinions and then we have facts, but the facts are, according to the United States Census Bureau, by the year 2042, they said America is going to be a majority brown country. Right. White people are dying faster than they're being born. And as stated by this recent shooter, he said, we are afraid of being replaced. We don't want to be replaced. So that's what their own well, don't have numbers to. are saying. Exactly, simple as that. <laughs> so they're saying we don't want to be replaced. Okay, well, I get you, but it's happening. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not, a, not a racist thing, it's just, well, they're recessive, we're dominant when it comes to genetics. So the more children we have, the less they are gonna exist. They keep trying to have children with us, but our genes are overtaking theirs. Right. So in the future, there's gonna be more brown and black people, less white people. We're already the, mi the majority on the planet, to make that very clear. We're the minority in America currently, but very soon we're gonna be majority here as well. Right. That's facts, not opinion. Now, because so, we, we just had uh, one name, Stacey Abrams. Yes. She mm -hmm. said that we was 12 percent. We're worth 12 percent of America. Hmm. Worth worth 12 percent or 12 percent of population? Population. About uh, 14 percent. God damn. Yep. So who, 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 who got the other 86? <laughs> well, white people are over 45 percent. Then you got Mexicans around 10 to 11 percent. You got Asians in there. Uh, Pacific Islanders, and they have other Europeans. Right. But no, white people are roughly around 50 percent. Right. Just about that much, but that's dwindling because you notice they wanted to bring in people from Syria a little bit and then other European countries, these the Ukrainians. Uh -huh. But when the Haitians try to come in, they blocked in. Right. Okay. Because they do not want these numbers to continue to move in our direction. They're like, well, we'll take somebody from Europe. Well, that's cool. Right. But y'all, we can't have no more niggas coming in. Right. Because right. that's, that's a that's big, that's a big jump from, like you said, around 14 to mm -hmm. about 20, 20. That's a huge that's jump. That's a huge jump from right. 14 to 45. They, can't, they, they, they know we coming. <laughs> you can't stop it. Nah, man, it's, it's, it's real, brother. It's real. This goes back very far. There's a book called The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg, a white man who wrote about it. Uh, that book was referenced by Dr. Frances Cress Welsing in her book called The ISIS Papers. She mm -hmm. calls it the war of genetic annihilation. She said mm -hmm. that the fear of the... And it's not every white person that even thinks like this. Right, right. It's the very wicked elite at the top who know exactly what's going on. She said they are afraid of being bred out of existence. She used to do lectures right, with a penis, a black penis, in the shape of a gun. Right. And she said, this is the gun that will end the world of the white man. This is Dr. Frances Cress Wilson. So she was talking about this in the 70s, 80s. She was debating people all on the internet, or probably all on uh, TV. She was debating, uh, who was it, uh, William Shockley at mm -hmm. the time, white psychologist, and he was trying to get at it. And this black woman was just demolishing one of the most powerful minds we ever had. And she said, no, you are going to be the minority. Right. In this country, you're already the minority on the planet. She said, and that's what you're afraid of. She said, but we are not going to do to you what you did to us. Right. I think that's the biggest fear. Mm -hmm. They scared. Retaliation. They think that. We've we, we been lying to them. All right, we done tricked them. Let's get their ass and slap them. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, come on. Like, that ain't even in our blood. No, nah, that's not how we are. Oh, we would have been did it. That's a fact. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Cause they, they, they feel like we ain't fed up. We've been fed, nigga. That's a if fact. You look at any DVD, any movie, <laughs> Anything from 22 on down, mm -hmm. what the fuck are they talking about? Mm -hmm. It's in our culture. Mm -hmm. It ain't like we are literally trying to learn who we once were That's fact. while we're going through trauma. That's a fact. That's you a see fact. what I'm saying? So they keep trying to press this trauma narrative on us like we would really came from slaves. Right. Exactly. You, like, it, it, don't, it don't make sense. And then they scared of us gaining the knowledge of who we once were. And you be like, bro, it's, it just don't make sense. Man, brother, I, I, took a, I took a land in the world not to give it back. The intention was not to give it back. I took it. Now, again, we know we got white folks. We hang out. We got friends and allies or whatever you want to call it. Some people cold switch. I talk like this in front of white people. They respect me for it. Right. I tell them exactly what it is. They say, thank you. Simple. Just speak the truth. But I will say this. They do not want you, me, or us to come into a position of power, and not all of them, but again, the ones at the top. Right. They do not want black people owning the majority of banks. Black people own the majority of farmland. Black people own the majority of transportation systems. Black people own the majority of education. What if you put real knowledge inside of all the schools? Then what will happen to the next two, three, four, five generations? They're not gonna have the mentality of an indoctrinated person. They're gonna say, no, this is the actual truth. But right now they call it critical race theory. Okay, well, the facts are the facts, and that's all we need to be dealing with, true history. But they don't want a generation to come after that's going to say, 
we are going to pay you back for what you did to our ancestors. Right. But again, like you said, that's not in our nature or else we would have been did that. Right. We're right. not right. contemplating, yeah, I'm going to beat your ass. No, that's not what we're thinking right. about. But we are thinking we will defend ourselves right. if you try to come against us. And we just don't want you to stop us from rising and getting our own everything. You got your own stuff, you want our own stuff too. Mm -hmm. It's just really that simple. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're going we to get into it, brother. That's a whole, that's, that's a layer. It's a whole layered conversation when it comes to that. So, so, because I, I talk to my people a lot, right? As a generation, mm -hmm. I say to me, because I was, this was before I even knew about kings and how, what we, being mm -hmm. Hebrew and all that, right? Our most prominent and, and promising years looked like when we got out of slavery between, like the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. when, I'm thinking, when, I'm, when I'm thinking, our promising years because our mentality as people. Yeah, we yeah. were more so on unifying mm -hmm. infrastructure. Yep. Let's do this now, like like Black Wall Street, mm -hmm. you know, OKC in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Majority, we don't know that we've done it because they burned it all. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> they destroyed it, threw bombs on any part of any black community that was rising mm -hmm. and had real infrastructure where the motherfuckers were like, in a minute, they ain't gonna need us. <laughs> we got to tear that shit down. That's a fact. We don't know nothing about it, and we feel like we can't do it. That's a fact, and we're, we're afraid that if we do it again, they're going to do to us again what they did to us back then. Right. So I wrote that in the book too, chapter nine. Over 60 all black towns, bro. Tulsa was one. Right. And they only want you to know about that one because that's the one they completely destroyed. Right. So that you would think in the future generation, if you ever step out of line and try to do that again, you're going to see exactly what's going to happen to you. That right there. That's the first time they ever used planes, helicopter bombing planes, dropped on American soil, was on a black group of people who were successful, economically savvy, intelligent, business owners, all that. We wasn't just some niggas right now. No, we were tradesmen, we were scientists, we were right. bankers. We had it all. But just be mindful that there were over 60 all-black towns. We had multiple towns, multiple ones. And between 1865 and 1877, you had the Reconstruction Age, we went back to school, we became doctors, lawyers, and all that. Right. We reversed in a decade what they prevented us from having in three centuries. Mm. Three. Century. It's 10 years to reverse all that shit. 10 years. So 300 years you held us down. We reversed that in 10. Mm. They're like, how the hell? No, hell no. No, no. If we let them continue to do this, right. no, they're going to take us over. So what did they do? 1877, I believe, we had someone by the name of William Levy, a Caucasian Jewish man who came between the congressman and he talked to Republicans and Democrats. And he said, hey, we need to get these black people back on the plantation. Y'all, they're gonna outpopulate y'all. They're gonna get your money. They're gonna get the control of everything. What, what you know? What, what do you, what do you say? That's when both sides decided to put us back on a plantation. It's called the Compromise of 1877. This is why I don't argue when it comes to this Democrat Republican nonsense. Y'all both dancing, y'all parties, and I don't trust either one of y'all. You said 18 what? 1877. Mm -hmm. They decided to put us back on the plantation. Both of them. Both sides of Congress, Republicans and Democrats. So at that point, then we started going back into being on the plantation, removing us from working. You had Samuel Gompers, another white man who said, we're going to create only white unions. Mm -hmm. So even though all y'all black folks were skilled in brick masonry and electrical, y'all did all that, we're going to just make it to where the unions will only hire white folks so that y'all will be pushed into becoming economically enslaved again. So you ain't got no choice but to steal and rob because you ain't can't get no job, you can't feed your family, etc. So again, it's not a victim thing, but we have to understand how we got here. Yeah. That's all. Right, right. But we have to also understand that we can make it much better than when it was back then. Right. We can make this 10 times better. You know what? This would be the perfect time to tell them. Welcome back to the Anytime <laughs> Self Show. I was waiting. I was like, we're going to start yeah. this. Like... Yeah. You know, we do it like that because ever since we got voted the number one black TV show that ain't on TV, wow. we've just been doing it our own way. That's how you do it. Okay. Right. Wow. We got a very special <laughs> guest wow. in the house with us today. We're in the trap today. We're in the whole, we got a whole new couch, so we're, it's like we in the house. <laughs> yeah, man. We, yeah, man. When we bring, when no we bring people out, man, we had to go to the furniture store, get us something yeah, nice, man. Burns, you know, something that wasn't convoluted with the world. Right. <laughs> Ain't yeah. no ass been on this show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't say. Yeah. Right. Watch out for the crack. Brand new. Brand new. Fresh out the plastic, man. Well, look, man, we got somebody with us today that we know gonna drop some game on us. Okay. That's gonna leave us thinking about something that, you know, we might have even thought about. Looking at it, he got a whole nother perspective, man. First of all, before I even give you an intro, I gotta give a shout out to Corey Holcomb. Cause Corey Holcomb hold you down okay. on, yeah. on the internet. If anybody oh, say anything, Yes, sir. Corey Holcomb is coming to your defense. My brother. So yes, we got a very enlightened brother with us today, DC. Mm -hmm. We got Reza Islam man, in the trap with us today, man. <laughs> he said, uh oh. He said, uh oh. 
Oh, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. A real righteous yeah. brother, man. Yeah. First of striving, all, striving, striving. Give us an intro. Catch us up. Tell the 85 percenters who you are, those who may not know. Mm, really hit them with the science already. I like that. Yeah, exactly. I just say it this way, brother. I'm a brother doing my best to simply be a brother, and I mean that. Uh, born and raised in Compton, California, youngest of 10 children, bloods, crips, gang banging, smoking drugs, all that kind of stuff in my house, around my neighborhood, you name it. Uh, had family on crack, family was doing heroin, Every, everything you can imagine. Been through it, seen it all. Uh, and I really just got tired of what was going on with my people, in my neighborhood, in my family. I got sick and tired of it. And I said, I cannot sit here and just watch this going on. I gotta do something about it. So since about the age of nine, 1999, is when I started working with our people in the area of education, illiteracy programs, drug education, drug rehabilitation, you name it, right there in Compton, California. Nine years old. Nine years old. What did you come in contact with the knowledge? Oh, man, I was actually, I was born in the Nation of Islam, uh, you can say, and I didn't actually, you could say, accept the teachings until my mid-20s. But I was born praying in Arabic before I knew what I was saying in English. Uh, all my siblings, Muslim names. My name literally is Reza Islam. That's not a stage name, that's mm -hmm. my actual name. Mm -hmm. So I was raised, you know, in this, but, um, but my stepfather who brought us into it, he was arrested I think when I was about seven or eight. So when he was taken, that's when the family collapsed. He went back to the streets, drugs, gangs, you name it. I ended up with my mom, just me and her. Uh, going from house to house for a short period of time. And then at that point, you know, working in different programs, working in the community for years, doing all of that. And it wasn't until about the age of 22, 23 that I got around, you know, the nation. I'm trying to, I'm like, figuring out, okay, this is where my family been this whole time. And at that point, I became more active when it comes to the Nation of Islam in particular. But being in the community, doing community activism, been doing that since I was nine years old. Mm. Yes, sir. You've Pretty been, much. You've been, <laughs> you've been doing your thing, man. You really made your rounds and, you know, built a name for yourself. For, like you said, being a righteous brother. Yes, sir. So you got a new book out? Yes, sir. Website? Yes, sir. How's everything going? <laughs> That's a good question. As Brother DC was saying earlier, a couple of minutes ago, about the censorship, uh, I'll put it this way, when I came out with this book, 2019, toward the end, 2019, every topic that I cover in here is topics that I've learned about throughout the years working with the people. So I can go into a lecture on every single chapter in that book. Educated about it, taught it all across the country, helping our people to build their mind, get solutions, build themselves, build a the community. But this book uh, became a problem because it got into prisons, male and female, mm -hmm. juvenile halls, you name it. And then uh, I guess, about a year ago, I got a call from the distributor. They said, they're not letting it go to, the, to prison no more. I said, what you mean? They said, I don't know, probably one of the guards. You know, they, they read through the material for right, us to see right. if the prisons can have it. They said, no, nah, they put your book on the list the same as the new Jim Crow mm -hmm. by Michelle Alexander. Mm -hmm. So your book can't go into the prisons anymore. I said, okay, so there you go. So, you know, they, they not only removed this, but they also removed all of my platforms, as y'all know. Right. Uh, my platforms reach between 16 to 18 million people a week. Had 120,000 followers on Facebook, 149,000 subscribers on YouTube, 545,000, over half a million followers on Instagram, 55.2 thousand followers on Twitter, and I was reaching 15, 18 million a week. They took all of that down directly from the United States government, from the president, Congress, and they brought in Jack Dorsey over Twitter, they brought in Sundar Pichai of Google, and they brought in Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, which is now meta between Instagram and Facebook, and they said these 12 people are the responsible party for 65% of all the misinformation when it comes to vaccines and COVID. So they call us the disinformation dust. This ain't even got a sense of humor, bro. Oh, y'all, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I mean, y'all think I'm playing, bro. It's, it's no cap at all, bro. No, no, we, we know. It's, it's interesting, bro, it's very interesting. But once they said that, you know, because it's like people get their platform taken down for all kinds of different reasons, right. but not by direct government order from the president, and they said, no, these 12 people, and particularly myself, Robert Kennedy Jr., 10 other people, and they said, these are the ones causing the problem. They said they are responsible for the majority on the internet across 65%. the planet. 65 percent. minimum of people who are becoming hesitant for taking a shot. No, we were, we're providing the proper right information and solutions that now people see as true and actual facts. But they didn't like that, and they said, because these people have too much influence, and they said, the young black one, <laughs> this your brother right here. They said him, 
he's having too much of an impact. They said he has 70% influence in the black community alone. And he said, that is a problem. So they started going to different, that's a lot, but I'm gonna talk, you know how I talk. We, 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 I'm just, we, we, you let me know, cause I don't wanna go too fast. Y'all let me know, we good? We good? Yeah, you good. Okay, this is one saying, of them ones where it ain't, we, hey. don't, we don't have a lot to say. It's like, we know you came through, like you said, with the knowledge. We're doing a lot more listening than talking today. Okay. So since they took all your platforms, Man. talk your shit. Man, I right, appreciate that. That's love, that's love. <laughs> you got the I always light. gotta ask. Talk no. Is, yeah, because I don't, you know, I always gotta ask, brother, because it is real. Mm -hmm. You got talkers and you got those who do. So once they came after your brother's platforms, first they took down the honor of the minister's far, Kyle my leader. You already know that. Right. They went after his in 2019. Took him off of Twitter, took him off of Facebook and YouTube for no reason, etc. They said it was hate, like they always say. But once they came after my platform, they said, uh, he has too much influence in the black community where COVID is concerned, vaccines, certain things done with health and topics like that. They call me an extremist. They call me a, a domestic terrorist, anti-LGBT, anti-vaxxer, a Farrakhan fanatic, all kinds of stuff. I'm like, so I'm just anti all this. I'm just a big, crazy dude, just, yeah. just, just talking. Okay, so once they removed my whole platform, like I said, I was reaching 15, 18 million people a week. Okay, they removed all the platforms, and so it went from that to reaching about Two to 300,000 a week, just so you can understand. So that's the process. But if I were doing this to be seen, to be famous and all that, then I would have shut my damn mouth about anything right. that was exposing the government. I would have just kept doing general education videos, right. doing stuff like that, because, yeah, I want to be seen. No, because you need to know what they're doing. You have to know, and then you have to be armed and prepared with solutions so that you can help yourself. That's the point, and they know who is really arming you. The enemy knows, for real, for real. When you got people talking about themselves all the time, yeah, that's one thing. But when your enemy, this government, comes out with a list and they say, these particular people right here are an issue, then that's probably who you should be listening to. I don't know. When do you feel like the problems for you started on that side? Hmm. Or what, like, was there anything that you put out that made them, you know, them, okay. Now it's, <laughs> now it's for real. Uh, 2013, before I had an Instagram, I didn't get an Instagram until 2017 when the FBI visited my house in 2013. Mm. Oh, it's real, y'all. We, we, we gonna get into some real, <laughs> we gonna get some real stuff, bro. Seriously, when they visited me in 2013, that's when I was uh, bringing out certain information dealing with UFOs. That's what they said. Now y'all like, oh, here we go. They just did the Tell press conference, like, today, bro, wasn't it? Brother, they, they got the disclosure. And everything they like, because at a certain point, We've been taught all this by our leaders. Every single generation, we have leaders that teach us. They give us the game, and some of us listen, some of us don't, and then later on the truth comes out, and it's like, oh, that they was right the whole time. What were you saying about UFOs <laughs> that got you on their on they, uh, radar? I was talking about where they were made, for example, and not from some outer space area. That's the first thing. The Honorable Minister was Farrakhan from the Osama Village Muhammad taught him exactly where they came from, when they were made, et cetera, et cetera. So I recommend everybody watch Minister Farrakhan's lectures on UFOs called The Wheel. He talks yeah. about The Wheel. Now they're coming out verifying that these do exist, uh, that they've been in the sky for quite a long time, they're not from outer space. And the main thing that they never wanted to admit is that they do not have anything that can compete with them, control them, or defend themselves against if they get attacked by them. That's why they didn't want to reveal it. UFOs? Yeah, which we call planes. They're, so they're baby planes. So planes that can destroy them. No, this government didn't. No, but the original people did. Mm. High technology, and it's not even no spooky stuff. Mm. See, that's another thing. It's like pyramid shit. Now, brother, big ass pyramid. Brother, the brother. They've been trying to figure it out here. <laughs> brother, I'm telling you. See, like, the funny thing is, we don't think too much of ourselves as a people, and that's a problem. Yeah. You don't think you're that smart. You really think you're just a nigga. You can't make nothing that's intelligent. Nothing of high technology and high science and mathematics because they made you believe you really are nothing. But the moment you find out you built something that this government can't control, mm. now you want to, well, you sure? Yes. Yes. Who taught them what they know? Mm -hmm. Why the hell don't you study yourself? This is one reason why I don't like when some of us get out here and we just talk so damn much. You don't know what the hell you're talking about because you're still bowing down to your enemy. You're afraid of him. Mm -hmm. You don't love yourself. You love him. We die, you make excuses for it, but when we get killed by them, or probably we die, you applaud it. They kill us, you make excuses for it all the damn time. I don't understand this. Like, it's, just a, it's, a, it's too much that we have to deal with, but once we learn ourselves, get the knowledge of ourselves, knowledge of God, mm -hmm. knowledge of the true history, mm -hmm. knowledge of the time and what must be done, then they won't be able to convince us of nothing. We won't trust them for nothing. Over 200 million people took that shot, bro, in America, alone. 
Y'all y'all know that, right? Over 200 million people took it. There's roughly 330 million people in America. Over 200 million at least took that. Now people are regretting. But the question is, why did you trust them in the first place? So we gonna let's 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 keep going. I ain't just, I want to keep going, y'all. It's, 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 I want y'all to time in. No, we gotta <laughs> Time in, brother dog. No, come on, man. Come For on. For the people who watch it, who may want a reference about the UFOs, what should they yeah. go check out? Uh, reference material for the UFOs are what we call the wheels. They're not unidentified. The, the system has identified them, but they keep saying unidentified. You have different presidents who are talking about it. Jimmy Carter talked about it. Abraham Lincoln was very, very interested in technology. He loved technology. A few presidents said that they were going to declassify and release documents when they became president. They said, when I become president, I'm going to release documents dealing with UFOs, but never Obama. Mm -hmm. Obama even mentioned it. Matter of fact, he slipped up and said, Area 51. And the whole room started, like, saying, ooh. He said, wait, am I the first president to openly talk about Area 51? He said, well, all right, well, there it is then. I talked about it. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's real. It's real. No, so one reference material is The Nation of Islam and UFOs by Elia Rashad. Matter of fact, go to NOI.org or finalcall.store and get pretty much all the books on all different topics. But UFOs is a main one. Elia Rashad, Brother Demetric Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, watch all of his lectures on the wheels. The wheels, UFOs, etc. All of that, they will give you reference materials. Uh, we also had some of the top uh, meteorologists. We had some of the top enthous- enthusiasts and researchers in this area who met with the research team in the Nation of Islam. So nothing we say is, is you know, a farce, is a lie. None of that. It's all factual. But again, that's another reason why they be talking about us, because they're like, yeah, y'all, y'all just, y'all speaking too much damn truth. Why are you exposing everything? Well, everything ought to get exposed. We're not supposed to educate ourselves. Come on, bro. We're supposed to be dumb. Come on, man. The first thing I just say is go watch those lectures, then get the books, whatever you need, but it's, it's, it's real. It ain't what did exposed. they say when they pulled up on you? I'll tell you this funny part, right? Look, <laughs> here's the funny part right here. 2013, right? It was two people. Knock on the door. I hear this knock on the door. It was a, an Asian woman and a bald head brother standing at the bottom of the steps. Right. I said, okay, because psychologically, they already know they, they know your profile. Six foot five, six foot six, African American male. Don't come off too threatening. Bring an Asian in there. I'm just saying, that's how they do it, right? So they, they put the brother down there. So the brother's at the bottom of the steps with his shades on. Why is your shades on and hers are not? Okay, so I'm, this is how they do it, right? Boom. She, Opens the door, I open the door, she shows me the ID. Real big FBI badge. I said, okay, y'all got some funding for real. That's a nice badge. That's what I said, pretty nice badge. She said, uh, yes, Mr. Islam, can we come in? I said, no, but I'll step out. I step out, I had a big shirt that said Allah's God on it, real big. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know. I was watching cartoons, actually, trying to relax for a minute. They know when they get you, bro. They know right. they, they come early in the morning, right, right, you eating, eating a peanut butter and jelly right, sandwich. Right. They know what to do. They're like, go get them. So I talked to her. And she asked me these questions. Are you connected to any terrorist organizations? You know, is this you? They had a file right there in front of me. They opened a big legal size folder. Opened it, had my DMV photos in it, my last 15 posts on Facebook at the time. You know, certain information and things that you have to have access, like to the DMV record, stuff like that. To get. I said, okay, so you proved your point, you're legitimate. He said, so can you verify certain things? Is this you? And I said, yes. He said, did you say this about UFOs in the White House? I said, well, is it true? They said, well, no, did you say, I said, is it true? And so they said, well, let me ask you another question. And so they start asking me other different things. Are you connected right, to Al-Qaeda? Right, because they can't answer your no, question. No, they can't answer my question. No, but because the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They're, they're wired. Legally, that's what legally they do. yeah. Legally. Right. You know, we, we get it, but you, FBI. Mm-hmm. So she said, well, are you connected to any terrorist organizations? Are you connected with Al-Qaeda? Because I noticed some of your pictures, you're putting up a finger like this. Let me tell you all how sad the FBI is. I know y'all watching this one. Well, we could just, you can relate sad. that to the uh, the young thug. Now, anything that they can anything. identify with a group of people, they're going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. You can't say, and one thing, ah! Right. I, I said, one finger, they said, well, they use the same symbol. I said, it's nonverbal communication. One finger? Yeah. I said, so every single person on the planet Earth who does this, children, when they're counting, they're connected to Al-Qaeda. Right. They said, well, no, you're connected to a Muslim organization. I said, Al-Qaeda is not Muslim. Right. They said, what do you mean? I said, Al-Qaeda is a CIA. Hillary Clinton admitted this. Right. You created the CIA, or you created the Al-Qaeda, CIA. It's a United States-sponsored organization. They have some of the US flags on their uh, actual weaponry, and you fund them, you send tanks in, you send all that in, you send information in. Al-Qaeda is the CIA, US government. OK, well, we'll go to the next uh, topic. I said, huh? Am I, I'm talking to this is FBI, we're talking. Right. OK, because the thing is, 
a clean heart, a clean heart can't be hurt, but also a brother and a sister who has a good, clean record or who is really doing righteous things, you ain't afraid. You're going to speak the truth. Right. I don't need to fear you. You ask me questions. I'm going to answer. So then she says, well, are you trying to do anything that goes towards terrorizing American citizens? I said, really? That's when I got extremely offended. I said, ma'am, you are Asian. Your people were brought here by Americans to build the train system. I said, you had to get reparations as Chinese people because they put you in internment camps. Why are you working for the FBI, which is an enemy of your own people? I said, brother, you working for the FBI. How dare you? I said it just like this. I said, you gonna ask me questions like this and you don't study the organization that you work for mm -hmm. that abused and killed, raped and robbed and murdered your people and you, ma'am, are really sitting here asking me questions as if this government has not abused your people to this very moment. They don't trust the Chinese. Remember the Yellow Peril movement? Mm -hmm. Remember the dirty men of China? You don't remember none of this? I says, no, 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 no. You might want to start asking yourself questions. I said, you know I'm not a terrorist. I said, as a matter of fact, do you roll up on any of these white boys waving their guns all on the internet saying they're going to shoot this person, shoot that person? I said, because you know I don't have no guns. You know that. So you know who the terrorist is and you know, okay, okay, Mr. Islam. I said, no, 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 no. Let's go. Come on, we're talking. You know, so then it's okay, well, okay, well, Thank you. That's all we need to know. I said, okay, thank you. They tell them, get out of there. Get out of there. Because you <laughs> no, had home like, and they were like, get y'all out of there. I'm like, no, for real, but see. Get out of there. Man, you're so good out of there. Nigga, down there, educator. Hey, Bro, I'm like, man. They was riding home quiet as hell. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, but. It's crazy. <laughs> but it's just interesting to me because, again, people get on this internet thing and they be talking. I'm like, brother, you know who's real and who's not. Right. And that, let me not say this, you know, generally, but a lot of people have passion, as we should. A lot of people respond, you know, we got emotions and we want to say things because we really feel what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. I get that. Mm -hmm. This enemy is very real. Right. Don't get it twisted. If they want to come get you, they're going to come get you. Now, you don't need to be afraid. If you're doing what's right, cool. I done already made peace with that. I understand. You know where I'm at. They know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. The brothers are here, but well, as Minister Farrakhan said, God is who protects him. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy going to do what he does. But we don't need to be afraid if we're doing what is right for righteous purposes. So that's why I don't trip, but it's, it, it is real. So when y'all be out there talking on the internet and y'all be doing all that, you know, bump your gums, be careful. If you're not really about that righteous life for your people, then don't be talking like that because they will come check you and then you're going to be real quiet. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with all these celebrities and artists get up there and start trying to educate the people. Then they get a call from their manager. Hey, take that damn post down. You better shut your damn mouth. Okay, okay. And they take it down because you don't understand the enemy you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You just signed up for this. Some of us were born into this. Before Instagram, I was on this. Before Facebook, I was on this. Before Twitter, before YouTube was on this. I was on this. Been doing this. A lot of people started on the internet. I started in real life in the street and brought onto the internet what I've been doing in the street, just like a lot of other people. You know what I'm saying? Just like a lot of other people. I'm not the only one, but we got to make sure we pay respect to those who don't be all on the internet, who really out here helping the homeless, helping the rape victims, doing all this stuff for people out here in the street that you don't even hear about, doing the real work. And then you get up here, you get some views, and you think you did something. Bro, you can't move nobody in the hood. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> And the enemy knows you can't move nobody. The hell are you talking about? So we got to be humble. That, that includes me. I'm saying. We got to be humble and know where we are. That's all. So, yeah, the FBI came, you know, the first time. First That's the first time? First out of three. Next right. time it was two white dudes. That was funny. Oh, okay. Come on. I want to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't have the business. You was like, hold on, let me get my suit. Oh, I was in a suit, too. Right. Oh. I was in a suit, yeah. <laughs> crazy. What happened, OG? That's really crazy, man. Okay, second time, two white dudes were in Hawaiian shirts, like it's a movie, for real, bro. Yeah. Like some bad boys. I, I, man, I listen. I was like, y'all serious? I came outside, I said, really? Really? They said, hi, mistress. I said, you're really? I said, you guys really wear Hawaiian shirts? They was like, mistress. I said, no, really. I said, I'm just. This is a movie. I said, I'm just saying, we've not seen too many movies like this. So this is real. I'm just letting you know this is very ironic, hilarious. But, but go ahead. I talk to them like real folks, man. What's going on? Like, people get nervous. They real people. They not God. They far from it. You got more God in you. That's why they coming to check on you to make sure you're not shaking up the plantation. Right. Because they fear you. Right. Talk to them heavy like you're supposed to. If you're doing what's right, you will. Right. Let me say this, bro. This white dude, Chris was his name. <laughs> <laughs> he walks up to me, I come outside, and they, you know, we meet in the front of the, uh, of the house. It was him and his partner. Mm -hmm. Blonde hair, blue eye. I'm talking about straight Caucasian. I said, oh, good. Good, good, good. Very good. He starts asking me questions. Same thing, show me the DMV records, blah, 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 and all that. But then he showed me DMV records and pictures and photos of my family. I said, oh, 
y'all going this route. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not gonna work, but I like it though. We studied you, so you know those of us who study know what you're gonna do. Okay, threaten family, got it. Cool. Starts asking me these different questions and stuff. We talked for about two hours straight. They start asking me, you know, so how can you afford the suit you're wearing? You're not making that much money. I said, man, see, but you know too, huh? I said, you're right, I'm not making that much money. I was laughing because I'm like, yeah, so you can't use that one. What? You making all, no, I'm not, you're right. Cool, I said, but that's the thing, that's the beauty when you make friends and you do good things for people. People will bless you. I said, not only that, but I do know how to save money. I said, I know the Freedmen's Bank, we were afraid, you know, to save money, so we rushed out and bought everything. So I know you think I still have that mentality, but I actually do know how to save a little bit, though. Right. Like black folks, we do know how to save, right? And I'm being overly sarcastic with them, burning them, like, yeah, you gonna get this today. So then he starts asking more questions. He said, well, why do you do this in the first place? You're not making that much money at the program you're working at. You're working with felons and people on drugs and all that. Why, why are you? No, no I'm serious, bro. They, they don't give a damn. They don't talk, bro, they don't care. They keep the same energy. That's what I respected them for, though. Don't smile on my face. Tell me how you really feel. Man. So I can tell you exactly who the hell you are right. and why I will never trust you. He talking, I said, well, if my people weren't put in this condition that your people put them in, I wouldn't have to be doing this. Okay, we'll go to the next question. I said, okay, good, let's go to the next question. And that's pretty much how the conversation went for two hours. But I was just giving them the work, giving them the work. And by the end of the conversation, they said, well, you, you're actually a really great guy. I don't understand why, you know, they said, I mean, we're sent out here to give you questions, but you're a really great guy. Still, don't trust them. Okay, right. even with that, because now it's a psychological flip, try to open you up, bring down your, your oh, wall so that you can, yeah, yeah, let's go have some coffee. Ooh. Oh, please, stop yeah, it, sir, stop it. Me. Stop it, <laughs> stop it, brother, please. But I'll let him talk, go, 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 go. And at the end of the conversation, he's like, you know what, well, you know he said, man, hopefully none of this stuff uh, that you're being accused of is true and all that. I said, okay. I said, even if it's not true, which you know it's not, you're going to try to make something up anyway because I'm not going to stop. Right. So I said, you know, I may see you soon, I may not. And I did see him again like six months after that again. Mm-hmm. But the point is, they watch those who are effective mm-hmm. in really helping the people. I'm not the only one. Again, y'all, so don't make this ain't saying about no reason. No, I'm not the only one. I'm one of mm-hmm. those who really do the work. When you get out here, you really doing the work, for real, you will know because they will let you know mm-hmm. that they see you doing the real work and you causing a problem for them. You messing up their money, you messing up their influence, you messing up their traffic. Hey, shut your damn mouth. They're going to come in and send you a little notice. Hey, shut the hell up. They're going to you know, tap your manager or something. Hey, tell that nigga to shut, tell him shut up. Mm-hmm. And then you start calming down. You start just doing comedy and only sticking with comedy. Never say nothing serious about nothing. Like a lot of our people who have been buck broken all over the internet. Right. So no, nah, it, it's a real thing, bro. But 2013 is when I found out, okay, this is real. Like, they really do this. Y'all really come to people's houses. If I post something on the internet, like I told people, chapter two, social media, where I told people anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law through your social media posts. I said that about this years ago. What you're saying is in the terms and agreements on Facebook, they tell you that third parties can access your information, use the statements you make on the internet in court cases against you. Y'all better know what y'all dealing with, bro. That's why I'm like, chill out. Don't be out there just posting what's on your mind. Like they ask you, what's on your mind? The hell, don't tell them what's on your mind. Right. You tell them what's on your mind, what's on your plate. Hey. Tell them every damn thing. Tell time. them everything. Every time I look up, it's a phone in my face. Bro. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is crazy, man. So we got to get our discipline back and start realizing we got a real enemy we dealing with. So how do you think we do that as people? OK, because I, I think the wake up mm. energy is starting to oh, yeah. get around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you think we formulate mm-hmm. an infrastructure where they can just start listening to mm-hmm. want to inform them on who we are? Like you said, first mm-hmm. of all, we need those key things. Because yep. I like what you said. I, 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 I'm going to take that with me. We need to know how we got there. Yeah. So we can understand why we need to learn who we are. That's a fact. Because I think, like you said, a lot of people don't want to give a fuck. I'm like, but That's you want to be. I'm not that ass motherfucker. Man, it's easy. to be great. Right. Just know why you need to be great. Yeah. So how do you think we need to formulate some form of structure that it just instilled in us where it's like, all right, those teams, like you said, mm-hmm. we, was, we, was, we was lost for 300 years, mm-hmm. but our people were so intellectual, it only took a 10 to get back bro. on the track. High level positions, Lord, too, in 10 years. I'm not talking about just a janitor, which is cool, but I mean high level positions. We went back, we, doctors, lawyers, we, brother, like, Damn. it was crazy. It baffled them. They said, Put these niggas back in chains. Hell no, don't let them, no, don't let them take over, no. Right. It's real, but I said it this way. First thing, 
stop promoting our moves on the enemy's network. That's all. Having these kind of conversations is good enough, right? This is good. But let's not go into actual strategy, deep, detailed strategy on your enemy's network. YouTube ain't owned by us. Mm -hmm. These phones are not owned by us. That's why I got it sitting over there. It's not owned by us. They listen to everything we said. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, you get it, you get it. <laughs> it's not owned by us, bro. So they, they watching and listening, which is cool. Don't be afraid of it. Just understand how your enemy works. Be mindful, be strategic. Okay, stop promoting your moves on the enemy's network. Get with those who are like-minded. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, get with at least five to seven like-minded mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We don't need to all dress the same. We don't need uniformity, we need unity. We ain't all gotta put on a bow tie and wear a suit. We ain't all gotta have a cap on. We ain't all gotta wear a t-shirt. No, 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 no. We don't need to do all of that. That's cool, but it doesn't need to happen like that. We need unity, which means we all come together on the same page, the same mindset to go towards a specific goal. That's it. No matter what you're wearing, what you call yourself, Muslim, Hebrew, 5%er, uh, more, whatever, pan Africanists. Okay, all that's cool. You a nigga to, to the system. You a nigga. I like that, but you a nigga. That's mm. all. Simple as that. <laughs> all right, so, so they see you as one people. We right. need to see ourselves as one people. First thing, start having think tanks like we used to. Mm -hmm. Get with them five to seven like minded people at your house. Put your phone somewhere, probably in the damn microwave. I know y'all think this is funny, but like real talk. No, cap. Real, bro. You know that. Real. Know. Seriously, start having them with the people with influence. Right. Not the people that just talk, but the people who have influence and who are actually ready to do something. Right. Get with them. You got 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 dollars around your neck, bro. Mm. What can you do with 100,000 in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. What can you buy? What can you buy up in Texas? What can you buy up? In, what can you 100,000 what you just got right here? And then what can you what banks, farms? We need all this. Mm -hmm. Grocery store? We can do that. What you what you, why, why you acting like we can't do it? We can, but you have to get organized with the like-minded people. Then the rest of those people will follow after. Mm -hmm. That's all. Very simple. That's the main thing I will say. People who watching this show, they listen to you. They listen to you. They listen to our brother Chico Bean, anyone else who contributes. They listen, and they watching right now thinking like, damn, this nigga's saying a lot of stuff. They talking some real talk, but no. They wait till we do it first, then they will follow. Didn't I just say that? That I consistency said, is the main they, thing. They just going to do it like that. Some niggas just waiting on you. Because they cook. cook. So they can cook how you cook. Hey, you can them the whole recipe. They like, I ain't gonna do it. That's a fact. <laughs> you get it. That's a fact. <laughs> you be like, come on. God. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. That's a fact because they are used to, they used to failure. They used to us not being consistent. We talk real good, bro. We the best talkers in the world. Best dressers, best talkers, best everything. We'll do something for two months, drop it. <laughs> and then start moving somewhere. What, what happened? What happened to DC with the, the bank thing? Nah, I'm over here doing this now. Gotta you got to be consistent. Because our people are used to failure. That's all we're used to. Going to do something, somebody's stopping. Doing something, somebody's stopping us. Going to buy this, somebody took it. Going to do this, somebody killed it. That's all we're used to. So we expect failure. We count down the days until we're going to fall. DC going to fall. Watch, they're going to put a rape, uh, little rape allegation on them. Watch. I'm telling you, bro. We count the days. Because that's what we live through, oh, no. trauma. No, I, I pray not either. I pray not. Let's just make that clear. We pray not. We pray not. Brother, we pray not. Wait up. I'm like, bitch, you got me. Yeah, no. This was always handed to me. I got 10 minutes. You gonna fuck? Yeah. You get this one. He's crazy. <laughs> That's real talk. That's real yeah. talk, bro. You got to make sure that, that you know, it's just trauma that we're so used to. Mm -hmm. It's a trauma thing. We're used to the trauma. We're used to the negativity. We're used to that. But the positive and it being consistent and it's working and it's moving and it's us and we put this on? Man. Damn. We on time? It's just it's you know, the like it's a perception of thing. Cause I, it's I, a fact. I even have to tell people, failure ain't nothing but lessons that teach you how to succeed. That's a fact. That's how you gain So how do you... Be scared to fail. We motherfucker, you ain't gonna never learn how That's to win. Right. That's right. You just gonna run through the track? No, motherfucker, you have to run around the track. That's but a fact. you're scared mm -hmm. to go out there and fall on the track. Mm -hmm. But you don't wanna know how hard it is. Mm -hmm. So now you get to learn the knowledge, the whole dynamic of the track. So mm -hmm. just like you said, people are scared to fail, but we have to change that perception. That's a fact. Failure are nothing but lessons that teach That's you a fact. how to succeed. That's a fact. What are black identity extremists? <laughs> 20, uh, 2017, the FBI classified black people who love themselves, love knowledge, and also will have a high likelihood of defending themselves mm -hmm. against oppression, police, racist, white supremacists, you name it. They labeled us as BIEs, 
also known as black identity extremists, is what they started calling us. That's very interesting. Extremists. Black identity extremists. So you're an extremist because you learned who you are. Right. Your identity inspires you to be extreme. I said, mm, that's quite interesting because that's the new generation of COINTELPRO. Once you announce to the world that these people are this, then that is you letting them also know that we have a system set up to stop them. Mm -hmm. So COINTELPRO ain't went nowhere. It evolved tremendously. And we help ourselves to be entrapped by this. This is how they moved it. They trapped us. Onto this right here. The technology right? is a trap. That's a, that's a fact, how you use it. It can be used you know, wisely if you know how to use it, but it can become a major trap for us. See what I'm saying? So that's, that's one thing. But I said, no, it's not the identity that they're afraid of. It's our intellect. Mm -hmm. It's our intellect. Like you said, the awakening is happening. People starting to get information and knowledge that they never thought they could get. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you got the, the brother in the hood who never used to read nothing putting people up on game. You're like, when the hell you learned that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's scaring people now. You got people who you never expected to have high levels of knowledge to now drop some stuff on you that's like, yo, you, okay, you've been, you've been reading, studying, watching somebody, you, you own a zone. Mm -hmm. They be watching this show and I be looking at this show and I be laughing like, yeah, okay, they dropping that comedy because that's what you need mm -hmm. to ease it on, you know, ease the pain, to ease heavy things, but they dropping giant, just giant gems. I was like, these brothers here got some cold game they dropping on these episodes. Seriously. So that's the, the situation I'm looking at. And I said, oh, it's the black intellectual extremists mm -hmm. that they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. And that became my little AKA, Reza Islam, AKA the intellectual extremists. So, they were, they, so you feel like <clears throat> any black who's out here fighting for the people, that's who they are trying to label them as, mm -hmm. it's a black. Black, black man, woman, or uh, not necessarily collaborator, but anybody who is black, male or female, who's not just fighting for the people on the internet, but who was affecting their money, mm -hmm. affecting how the pharmaceutical companies are affecting and controlling people with drugs, mm -hmm. affecting the political status and how people can actually control things politically. Uh, people who are effectively making moves, not just talking. They target those and then the groups that are really doing it. That's why the Nation of Islam is still labeled as a hate group. You know they label us a hate group like the KKK, right? I know. I don't know why. I'm just yeah, like, bro. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> just so you know. Fun. Just so you know. We ain't hung nobody. Uh, we come ain't on, burned man. no motherfucking houses down, come on. businesses come down, on. and y'all still making y'all money, right? Y'all got y'all <laughs> house with y'all mind, right? How we hate y'all? Come on. I just be trying to figure it out. No, that's real talk. But I, I will say this for people who probably are thinking about this at the moment. But yeah, the nation Islam ain't never, you know, did none to the government. That's why they're still around. Such a foolish, foolish way of thinking. Boy, I, I, I really feel bad for people who think, you know, again, those of you who think that any black man or woman who stands up, speaks the truth, and really fights against the government ain't legit until they dead, you have a sick problem. You still believe the white man is God. That's your problem. I'm not legit until I'm dead. That's sick, bro. That's sick. You can't be legit until they take your life. Then, yeah, yeah we're gonna follow you. You ain't you didn't follow and help me when I was alive. What? This enemy, no, you ain't. You're not serious. You talk when somebody's dead. Now you can say whatever because they're not here to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You can just say whatever. Malcolm X, stop it. Stop, stop, stop. Damn, stop, stop. It infuriates those who really out here sacrificing, bro. That's why when I look around, I'm like, this is very interesting. But they don't tell you about, you know, mind you, the, the government doesn't want to promote when they lose. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one thing I want y'all to get to y'all head. Okay. They don't promote the losses. They're right. going to put up all the wins. Yeah, we shot that nigga over there. We shot you, kid, boom, boom, boom. Took that over all right. So they'll promote all their wins all day. All the W's cool. But the losses, they're not going to tell you about the L's. They won't tell you about the police officers who tried to raid the mosques in multiple areas and didn't make it out. Mm. Ooh. Didn't know about that, did you? They're not going to tell you about the multiple times when police officers tried to run up on FOI, Brothers of the Nation of Islam, and got their chests cracked, mm. and got their shields cracked and shattered. SWAT ran up to brothers with no weapons. Brothers ain't got the weapons. Y'all got the weapons. How do we beat y'all defending ourselves? It's very interesting. I thought the guns are <gasps> the greatest thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. We got God, and we apply God. That's the difference. <laughs> you run to a gun. That's easy, bro. <laughs> That's easy. You get a gun. What happens when you ain't got no bullets? What happens if you ain't got the gun? Now what? You can't use these, these, you can't use, you, you ain't nothing. You right. easy pickings, you a big ass walking target. Right. But y'all talking about the, the Muslim, yeah, the bean pie. Okay, yeah, all that cute talk is cool. Run up. And which is why you never see us on the news, on the ground. You don't. Why don't they run up on us? 
Can anybody answer that question? Why? Because everybody who talks about guns, if you want to have a gun, that's your choice. That's your choice. But I'm saying, let, let's be real. Once you get serious, then you start changing the way you eat. You start changing the way you drink. You start praying or meditating. You start exercising. You start training in some form of martial arts or boxing and all that. You'll start getting serious, planting your own food. You'll start studying your steps, counting your heartbeats, bro. That's how the enemy walks and, and he maneuvers and strategizes because he studies you. You don't study yourself enough. So all that talking is one thing, but I'm like, once you start getting organized for real, mm -hmm. then you become a problem. So all that talking is one thing, but I'm like, no, they, we've, we've, they don't attack us because they know we're not nonviolent. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, no. We're not nonviolent. We're not aggressive. Difference, meaning we're not gonna start the fight, but we damn sure gonna finish it. In the name of God, we gonna, we will, in the name of God and righteousness, we will defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what every intelligent group of people are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So again, we're not out here running around like, yeah, we're just gonna go kill all white people. Well, that's not even, it's not how we think. Right. But we will defend ourselves and we encourage everybody to do the same thing. Which, just segue into that topic that I know you burning to talk about, bro. What? I know you, yeah. What? You gonna get in there? <laughs> hey man, welcome back to the 85 yeah, Self Show. Come on, man. I had to bring you back. Y'all tell me how this setup is, man, because we just rolling. Because we was about to get too deep, and I don't know where you at with your mental capacity, man, but we in here deep today. <laughs> talking that shit. Off the dome, bro. Jim, drop it, boy. I love when you talk that talk, man. That's why I just be sitting back listening. And I was gonna ask you, is like when you said they took away your platforms, have you had access to be on other platforms and mm. to go out and vocalize and, and you know, and speak? Right. Yes, um, I'll say it this way. There are other platforms that reached out to me. Here's the sad part. A lot of them are independent to a degree. Mm -hmm. But if they are connected in any way to, to the same those engines. platforms, the same right. then, they, then they, I can't be on there. As a matter of fact, there, there are text apps that told me that they can't house my content. Text apps. They said, sorry, we're, we're not able to. <laughs> Bro, I said, oh, oh, I said, oh, come on, you a text app. It's a phone. What are you doing? They said, nah, sorry. We got. I said, okay, that's interesting. You know, it's, it's real, man. Is real. I said, this is funny to me. So I had to search for different platforms. You have a black-owned platform. Yeah, fan base. Uh, fan base is cool. And shout out to fan base, to our, to our brother uh, Isaac. Isaac Hayes, shout yeah. out. Uh, because that is a beautiful platform. I have certain disagreements with it, but it's a platform. Mm -hmm. So if you got it, use it, definitely. Um, Melanated People is another app. Powerful. Literally can't get on it unless you are a melanated person. They mm -hmm. screen you. When you apply, don't get mad. It is what it is. Right. It's, it's a dope platform. You can go live on there, post Melanated, people. Melanated people app. Dope app. There's a it. lot of social media apps that black people don't even know nothing about. They don't. Yeah. But got a lot of people on it. And exactly. good quality, too. I mean, like, real good quality. I'm not just saying, and that's another thing. Most of these platforms are sponsored and funded by capitalists, international bankers who have large amounts of capital. They got yeah. millions upon millions of dollars. They have servers. They have access yeah, to all the computer tech people. Right. So don't sit here and treat your brothers or sisters who come out with something and just because they have a little bug every now and then in it and they say, okay, it's down for a second, we're making adjustments, etc. Don't get mad at See, black people can't do nothing. We, right. we, our we stuff can. is trash. God we damn. can. Work with us. Be patient, bro. Shit. The majority of our people ain't no billionaires. Just chill out. Work with us. Hey, how about this? Why don't you donate a couple of dollars to it? Help it come out, you know, faster. Why not that? Because you donate to everybody else. You donate you everybody else. Everybody else. Bruh, you don't fucking know. It's interesting, but they think because Instagram is free and Facebook is free. No, it's not free. Right. Your content it's is not being free. paid it's for and, and invested in by Whatever ads. time you put you in there, that, that's, you, you pay for you that with your time. Rhythm. Brother, you put your, this brother on a platform like Instagram. Instagram will make money because they'll tell the advertisers, he we got, got this person right. posting on there, so, you know, on his post, your ass can show up, so they get the money that way. You think it's free. No, you being pimped. Right. Big pimp. You a prostitute without knowing it. Simple as that. We got to understand that. That's a major thing, so don't think because it's free that it's for you. Right. It's never for you. No, if you really want people to support you and you want to get your message out, you want people to do what's best for you, then you got to support it financially. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. I ain't never asked for no donations, bro. Never. But it don't matter. The point is, if you got something, we should support it. You got something good, we should support it. Especially if you're really out here doing what's really good for us, we got to support our people. That, that's, that's a... I'd rather that's buy something than over there anyway. Come on, bro. That, that's something that, that irks me to the bone. It's like, wait a minute, you will spend with somebody who you know hates you. 
You know they hate. They just said I hate. They said, yeah, and y'all niggas gonna keep posting it. Tomorrow we post it. Mm. <laughs> they like, y'all not serious. You're not serious. That, all that talk is nice. You're not serious. They Watch your post tomorrow. Like you say, we'll be over with it. Clockwork. Mm, protests in not, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Over with. Mm, yep, the next thing coming up, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Okay, got it. Yep. What? All right, guys. People don't show. I told you. It's sad being predictable. That's sad. Your enemy can predict what you're going to do? That's sad. Speaking of That's being predictable, what's going to happen after this, this get, uh, grocery store thing? Buffalo. Since it's, since it's so predictable and we on the clock and the Go ahead, schedule, brother, you... <laughs> what's going to happen next? No, because I'm sick and tired of this. Dude. What's the routine? Oh, man. <laughs> I'll say it this way. I'll say it in this, in this type of... First of all, let's put this in context. Black folks, you're not about to go out and kill all white people, so stop it. I, I, got, I got to highlight that. I got to say it because right. it has to be said because a lot of people feel it. I want to go do this. I want to do that. Okay, I, I got you. You've always been at war. Always. Since you were brought here and then those of our people who were here before, our ancestors, some of our ancestors were brought here. We, we have been at war. So, so let's make this, put this in context. You didn't do nothing yesterday. Mm -hmm. You didn't do nothing the day before. You didn't do nothing last year. How many mass shooters have there been that you didn't do a damn thing about? How many people came up and did something to our ancestors left and right and you didn't do a damn thing? Listen, understand this. How serious are you really? Mm -hmm. Are you serious enough, let's go in this direction, to separate and have your own banks, to build your own infrastructure for real? Mm -hmm. Are you serious enough to not only build your own grocery stores but protect them? Are you serious enough to have your own schools? Are you serious enough to have your own everything that everybody else got and protect it. Because the funny thing is, you quick to react to something, but you slow to build something. Real quick to say, I'm going to go do this, but you real slow to say, let me build this so that we can have our own, so that we don't even have to go over there. Mm -hmm. You ain't going into no Jewish community talking anything and saying anything you want to because you see it's written in Hebrew. They got their own stories. They all walk with the top hats. You're like, okay, I don't even feel like I belong over here. But you will quickly say, somebody come over here and do this, yeah, rah, rah, rah. But the funny thing is, if they notice that we don't call our women bitches, we say this to y'all. White people would respect us more if we check them when they disrespect us and if we check each other when we disrespect ourselves. See, you're not going to sit here and teach me how to call your woman a bitch and then tell me that you want me to respect her when I call her one. I'm going to say this, bro. Because the sobering thing is, when I get in front of all these white folks and I tell them the truth, they say, but you're people. And I say, I don't give a damn. Yeah, we ignorant. Yes, you put us in this condition to a degree. And yes, we perpetuate it. But now we're coming out of it. Period. No, it ain't cool. I don't give a damn how many brothers you heard say this, how many black men said or did this. It's over with. Some of us ain't with that. Call her that and see what we do. Mm -hmm. Jump on my brother and see what happened to you. And mean it. But don't do it when it's just selective. Don't just do it when it's one person. This white supremacist 18-year-old got a semi-automatic rifle, drove it to Buffalo because he knew it was more black people there versus the other parts of New York. Spotted him out, shot 10, 13, killed 10, told the white dude, oh, sorry, didn't shoot him, blatantly let you know, yeah, I'm a fascist, I'm a white supremacist, I did this because I hate niggas, I hate Mexicans, and he said I hate Jews. And he said he was inspired by the other white supremacists because I don't want to be bred out of existence. I don't want y'all to replace us. Well, damn. What does that mean? You don't want us to replace you in this world. Well, we don't want this. We shouldn't want this world anyway. You want this government that allows pedophilia, that allows sex trafficking, that allows organ trafficking of your children, that allows your women to be murdered, raped as over 75,000 black women still missing, and you ain't doing shit about it? You want, you want this world. Why don't you build your own? That's what we should be doing. I don't want this. This is a sick as hell world that is hell itself. I don't want that. I want my own. That's how we really do this. And if they see us building our own, as many of us are doing in certain areas, it's happening. Mm -hmm. They notice we doing that. They notice we're not going to their stuff. You know, we got our own functions. We got our own this and all that. We securing it. We're protecting it. That's how you really, really get their attention. That's how you really defeat this system. But the moment we just want to react the way they want us to react, because you think you got a little pop gun or something, not realizing you ain't got no helicopter gunships, bro. Mm. Your guns are knockoffs. Your guns are the rejects. You don't know about percussion grenades. You don't know about direct energy weapons. You don't know about none of this. You don't know about DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency that has robotic mosquitoes, robotic snakes, robotic dogs and cheetahs. You don't know about that. They assassinate you with something that looks natural. And you talking about my phone five, click, click. <laughs> Bruh, you don't know what type of enemy you dealing with. Because you talking about killing, but you dealing with a master killer. That's what they do. 
So again, I know y'all didn't expect it to go in that direction. Yes, we did. That's it. But that's yes, where it's supposed did. to go. We, we expected that completely. That's where it's supposed to go. Because I, I can just, the person who will react, rightfully so. Yeah, this racist dude gonna kill my people. Hell yeah, he deserves to die. Yes, I'm going to say on record, we in the Nation of Islam believe he deserves to die. That's a fact, yes. He killed 10 people. What is the penalty in America normally for murder? 25 to life death penalty. 25 to life death penalty. Two people you murdered, three people, four, and then you admit it, and then you recorded it on video. And you wrote a 180 page manifesto. Okay, the penalty is death, okay. You should be praying for him. How many pages in this book, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Only 161. The manifesto longer than this book. Bro, the manifesto is long. I said, that is interesting. And they all write manifestos. They all plead not guilty because legally they were giving counsel that they would not be able to get help to get out earlier than you, the normal, if they would plead guilty or insanity. So they're being coached by the older white supremacists and some of them KKK members to not plead, to plead not guilty. Just so y'all know how serious this really is. It's very very layered thing, but just telling people to go kill this and kill that, it's like, look, bro, if you're not serious enough to build your own, mm -hmm. you're not going to be serious enough when you declare war on some people who trained for that. That's what they trained for. Now, I'm not saying be afraid of nobody, no. Be ready to defend yourself whenever where. That's, that's a fact. Be ready to defend yourself. But that means you may have to smoke a little less, you may have to drink a little less, may have to start getting your ass. <laughs> you may have to start eating better. may have to start, you know, exercising and really training them. Like I said, martial arts, boxing, etc. You may have to start looking at what foods are edible, what plants are edible in different areas. Do you even know your directions? North, south, east, west. Do you know how to plant? Do you know how to filter water? Do you know how to start a fire? Do you know anything that deals with survival? Or do you just rely on this all day? Do you know how to read a map? Because y'all got one up here. Do you know how to do this? Because you're dealing with people that do. They know this. You talking though for real. If you want to go there, it's like, all right, you want to talk, let's talk. If you want to talk. Those of us who are involved in helping the people, we think of it on that type of layer. It ain't just react, react. They want you to react because you, they know you are well within your rights to react. Yeah, you're not prepared. But they, you're not prepared. They prepared. That's why they do what they do. I'm going to smack that nigga right now because I know he's going to get mad and haul off and punch me, but the camera was off when I slapped him. The camera gonna turn on when he punched me. Mm -hmm. That nigga going to jail. Got gotcha. you. That's what they do. Act like this, y'all. Act like this is news. Like it's real. It's what they do. And by the way, after that shooting, somebody shot up a Taiwanese church in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Just about an hour away from LA. Killed one, shot five more. Same thing. White supremacist, anti, they said anti Asian, anti, just white supremacist hatred. They're activating right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One in Buffalo. Another one happened downtown LA about a day or two around that time. Then Orange County, he said, so the reaction has to be, oh, y'all gonna do that? All right, yeah, we're gonna prepare, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna organize and start taking ourselves seriously. Stop talking about your women in public. If you have an argument, do it in private. Stop talking about your men in public. If you got an argument, disagreement, call the brother. Go meet up with him. Stop showing dissension in the ranks, division in public. No soldier in his own army attacks one another on the enemy's playing field. You look crazy as hell. Your enemy right there coming at you, you start arguing with him. Nigga, why you eat my peanut butter jelly? That was the last peanut butter jelly. You're in war right now, and you arguing over a damn peanut butter jelly sandwich? Y'all think I'm playing. This is really how simple it is. They looking at you and they're like, you're not consistent with anything. We know and predict your moves before you make them. You're emotional, you're reactive. You're not consistent with anything that's really good. We know how to get you. We can send a woman to you. And she'll kill you while you sleep, after she give you that good, good. Some of the greatest assassins are females. That's why the government uses them. This is how your enemy thinks. So you want to talk that talk? Let's talk it. But after you, we talk, you know, get prepared. So I'll just say get prepared to organize. Separation, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is our greatest and only solution. Separate from their mentality, from their culture, anything that's negative, destructive, any of that stuff. Separate from that. Separate from the way they believe in God. They mean in evil white people, evil people in general. Separate from all of that and go into your own. Establish your own. Build your own. Protect your own. And then you will see how people respect you. But the reason why I keep saying stop talking about men and women in public is because the world looks at us and they don't take us serious. And then when we want people to take us serious, they're looking at us like y'all are some of the craziest people on the planet. You told me how to kill your brother. You brag about killing him. You told me how to kill this girl. You brag about 
raping her and doing all that. You help to sex traffic her. A lot of the people doing the sex trafficking through Atlanta is black men and black women through the strip clubs. Bro, I'm gonna lay it out, man. Like, let's, let's Talk listen, about bro. It. You want your enemy to take you serious. And you are involved in your own destruction. We gotta be humble, bro. Seriously. This is real. But the only reason why people are not going to go to this level is because they're involved in one or more of these things that I'm talking about. <laughs> now, you're talking about the black women disappearing. And, like, I read somewhere that every year it's around the same number of black women that come mm -hmm. up. How the fuck is that even possible? Because they know where to go. They know where to get them. They know where they're going. And they have scouts. I mean, it's real, bro. Like, they know strip clubs, schools, and the, wa the, the walkways between the schools and the transportation systems, the bus stations, the metros. This is why we gotta protect our sisters, bro. And sisters, this is why you need to allow us to protect you. I gotta say this because you got both ends. I-N-D-E-P, shout out to Boosie, shout out to everybody, I get all that. But seriously, there is no other group of women on the planet who brag about being independent. That's insane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your body isn't independent. What if your organs started gang banging on each other? You die right now. If your heart said, I don't feel like pumping blood right now, I don't like y'all. Your lungs said, I don't feel like breathing. I'm going to just stop. See, be like your body. Unite and work together. That's That situation with the sisters, they know where to go to get them, how to get them. They scout them on the internet. They find out, is there a father in the home? I want you to know how serious, how sick this, these people are. They find out if there's a man in the house protecting her or not. Then they find out where she is on the internet. Then they go into these chat rooms, and they start to feed on her insecurities and start to... Make her feel good. Man, you're so pretty. You're so good. Let's talk. Boop, 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 they talking. Do, 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 do. And they get you to a point, or her to a point, to where she trusts them. Then they say, well, let's meet up. Boop, boop, boop. And they meet up. Next thing you know, she disappears. Just like that. She don't know what happened. White van pulls up. Boom, gag tape. Boom. She's out of here. Drugged. She's somewhere over in Europe. Sex traffic through Texas, through Orange County and California, two of the top locations. Now in Atlanta, and the reason why some of the, the professionals or the politicians don't talk about it in Atlanta is because a lot of them are a part of it. We called that out two years ago when we said the Stop Sex Trafficking ATL, we came out here to City Hall. We're trying to figure out why are y'all not talking about this? You know these sisters are going missing. If it was eight Asian women going missing, that would have been national news. Just saying. But it's all of these black men out here in Atlanta, and nobody, for the majority, is bringing that up. I got a problem with that. So, yes, sir, they, they, they know where to go. They know how to get them. So, sisters, get, get back to yourself. I, I'm, I'm going to say that. Get back to yourself. Find the brothers that you can trust. Dr brothers, be trustworthy. <laughs> protect yourselves and protect each other because people are benefiting off of our division. They know what they're doing. And they keep watching. This is why you said it's consistent. The, the numbers, because they know ain't nobody protecting them. And you got a lot of sisters who are pushing the independent thing so that they don't want to be protected. So a lot of men who want to protect you, you won't let them. And so you become a target. And your enemy knows that. So you lie when you be bragging about that. Yeah, go ahead, walk down that street by yourself. Yeah, go do that. You could talk all that. You come up missing. It happens every day. And some young, young boys, too. Just so y'all know. So we got to take a little more serious, man. We, I, I know we, 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 we family, but we got to really be family. Start taking each other a little more serious. Love each other past our faults. We ain't, none of us is perfect. I don't even know how we act like that. We be talking like we perfect over here, bro. Not one of us is perfect. This bow tie don't make me perfect at all. I just am striving to be a better brother. I got seven blood sisters and I will kill concrete for each and every one of them. They know that. There's no doubt. Any woman around my life, they know that. That's why they feel safe when we come around. Every black man, should walk into the room and the whole atmosphere should change because the women should feel at ease. They should be able to go like this. I'm good. But if they do this, it's a problem. It's a problem. I want before we wrap up. I want you to talk about. Hey, we've been talking the billion dollar. I know, but we got to talk about this though. <laughs> please, please, please. The business.